Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play the Journeyman Project 2, Buried in Time. A fine welcome to Chateau Gaillard. Well, looks like the only way out of here is down. Yeah, because apparently we start at the top of a tower, and we were also greeted by a guest. Luckily, he's dead. So that means nothing was caught, nothing went wrong, in terms of time, Jiggy. It doesn't look like he's going to need that arrow anymore. Arthur, I, Arthur's tone really does remo feel remorse for this guy. I think you should take the arrow. Well, we do need this arrow. It's a bloody arrow. This is another one of those items that duplicate every time you come back. Every time you come back, it's kind of like the metal bar in Farnstein Lab. But since we already have the bloody arrow, it won't show up a second time when we return here. Luckily, we won't actually have to. Hmm. The wooden roofs were covered with tin. I think to prevent being set ablaze by flaming arrows. It was very handy for a siege. If you remember the um, mission briefing, we're supposed to be jumping here to the last day of the siege to figure out how Philip Augustus' troops, the ones over there, came into the tower in order to finally take it. Unfortunately, we're a little late. That big wooden thing over there is a siege tower. Philip Augustus terrorized the defenders by surrounding the castle with 14 of these. They are pretty handy for being able to shoot over the wall of a castle, but they did have one minor drawback. Can you say flammable? Hmm. <laughs> Considering they had to be lightweight in order to actually move them. If someone should get a glimpse of us up here, in this suit we might pass as a knight. But I think we should be careful not to be seen. Hmm. A knight, a sure, sure knight. I totally believe you when you say I'm a knight. I don't even believe myself. Well, anyway, let's not waste any more time and actually get down. Look at that flag! Those boulders were dropped on any Nimrod trying to climb the walls. These ones. Okay. Okay, so anyway, stairs. In terms of sound effects, the footsteps coming down the stairs are probably the most over emphasized. A human presence, you say? Well, we've already met one person. It's a stair. All right. It's kind of interesting how they use the more finished stone on the outside of the walls to make the castle look more imposing, and use the rough stone on the inside. The space in between was generally filled with rubble and, oh, I don't know, annoying singing frogs and metal boxes. You're going to hear a lot of references into Chateau Gaillard. Ooh. We must adhere to the Prime Directive, Spock. None. Interference. Now, if you actually kept looking at the guard, um, Arthur would have been cut off. So, just be wary of that. But hey, dude! What's up? Keep! No, the traitor! You shall not flee now! Whoa! <laughs> Unfortunately, apparently in his, gi in his giant metal helmet bucket, I have no idea what he's t saying half the time. But yeah. Presence in the perimeter stairwell of Chateau Gaillard was detected by a castle guard. The sentry who mistook Agent 5 for a French knight, Arthur was right, pummeled him until death. The next of had been notified. That is a very intimidating weapon. Not when it's actually just kind of pointed at our face, but actually when it's trying to bash in our face. Alright, be right back. 
Also, if you look the other way down at the bottom of the stairwell, you get a door. Unfortunately, it's locked. Oh well. Alright, now let's look at the rest of this place. Got some more doors. Sounds locked to me. <laughs> That's because it is! Call it a hunch, but I don't think we're getting in. Hmm. Okay. Well, actually, the next way place to go is actually over here. But, there's another area down on the staircase that we might as well take a look at. Ignore the guy at the bottom. Fire! Get another door. It looks like it's trying to do fire effects with these shadows here, but it's, well, it's very low. I've got a nagging suspicion that the room on the other side of this door was neither modeled nor rendered. What the hell does that mean? Fortunately, it means that there's actually nothing on the other side of it. And we will never know anything because it was never modeled or rendered. What am I talking about? Anyway, let's get out of this tower and actually do some more stuff. I'd suggest we start looking around. Just keep in mind what you're looking for. Hmm, something historical has been tampered with. Where would be the most likely place to find something important? Well, I guess that anything of historical value would be somewhere in the keep. Whatever was messed with it, it's probably a good bet we'll find it there. Okay, so let's make our way to the keep. These wooden hoardings here? They were put up for defense before a siege to protect archers? And get this. Allow the soldiers to drop big, heavy, painful things on the attackers below. Charming, isn't it? So barriers, and also platforms. This castle really was the jewel in King Richard's crown. He once wrote about Chateau Gaillard. How beautiful is my year-old daughter. When Philip Augustus had said that he would take this castle so its walls were made of iron, King Richard retorted that he would hold it if its walls were made of butter. Then King John the Soft Sword took over. When Philip was done with this place, you could pour it on your popcorn. So the butter metaphor did come true. When Philip Augustus heard about Richard's death in 1199, he set about retaking Normandy. And within three years, in October of 1203, he was knocking on Chateau Gaillard's door with a formidable army. John answered the door with 300 knights, 3,000 horsemen, and 4,000 foot soldiers and assorted ruffians. We tried to surprise Philip's army with a night attack. Big mistake. He wasn't counting on the new cohesion and confidence of Philip's army in the light of Richard's death. They were slaughtered. So yeah, at the time of the siege currently going on, uh, Richard the Lionhearted actually died. Um, if you remember the news report, it actually does say how he died. He got a crossbow bolt to the shoulder, which then became infected, and he died two weeks later. So King John is at this point holding Chateau Gaillard, but not very well. The church is down here as well, but something like this, this area can be actually fairly missable. Ah, see that bridge to the inner bailey? This was the castle's one weakness. Under cover of the bridge, Philip Augustus's men managed to dig under the wall and collapse a section of it in what they called a, uh, let me look it up, a sapping operation. When an attacker would sap the wall of a castle, they would dig a tunnel underneath the foundation supported by a wooden framework. They would then set fire to the wooden beams and the tunnel would collapse under the wall, bringing it down. And the siege is going on, which is actually kind of muffling Arthur. But yes, although this place can be considered a bit missable, you do actually have to come back here, because there's a vital item in order to continue on with the time zone. Right here. Well, this has already served its historical purpose, and I, for one, can think of a few things you can do with a fine, sturdy grappling hook. So a clever French knight figures out that he and a few men can get into the castle by climbing up through a toilet. So right now, they must be fighting it out at the main gate. 
By now there will only be about 60 English soldiers remaining anyway. No wonder this place seems deserted. Yes, because if you remember, um, the time jump was actually skewed a bit, so we're late to the party. Barely anybody's here anymore. Anyway, let's take this grappling hook. Mm -hmm. That looks like a very small hole. He must not be wearing a lot of armor. If that, it's probably very light and he's probably very stringy. Unfortunately, we can't go any further here because there's a barrel in the way. These holes in the walls, or they call them arrow loops, were designed to protect archers while still giving them a wide angle of aim. And that wide angle of aim would be vertical, not horizontal, unfortunately. You'd have a bit of range horizontally from where you would able, be able to move, but not a lot of freedom that way. Now that we have the grappling hook, we can actually get onto what I consider the, I guess the third, the final third of the area. I do consider that this area would be can, divided into three chunks. We're still on the first chunk at this point. And here's the roof to the church. All right, eat then. I hope the serfs have umbrellas. Mm hmm. Yeah. Who knows where the waste is going? Ah, the classic Goddard. Simplicity at its finest. Well, something got through here. We can get a better look at what's going on out here. You want to know what made this castle such a unique piece of military architecture? King Richard's design for the keep and inner bailey. Look, see those rib-like structures ringing the top of the keep? They were designed to funnel drop projectiles down to the skirt-like plinth at the bottom, which bounced the stones in kind of a fan-shaped trajectory. This way, there was nowhere that the attackers could approach the castle without being blown. Yeah. Siege in the background. Like, this is... This is one problem I have with the audio, that... Brains, wipers of other people's bottoms. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelled of elderberries. Sorry, I always wanted to say that. Except we're doing it the exact opposite, because uh, Monty Python, which is what he's referencing, is the French soldiers had French sol sol The French soldiers? Did they even have shoulders in the Holy Grail? I don't even know, but they had the castle. They weren't sieging it. It was what King of the Britons was doing. So this is what a real siege looks like. Not a lot like what you see on the Holoflex. Not a lot of action. Most of it was just bringing an army, surrounding a castle to prevent defenders from getting supplies, and then waiting around until they either starved or surrendered. In the meantime, they built towers and assault engines, readying for when the defenders were softened up enough to attack. Anyone for bloodshed? Mm-hmm. It's almost like a stakeout, really. We seem to be getting closer to where that catapult is hitting, and I'd be willing to bet their aim isn't getting worse. Hmm. That actually should have been a help message, but he gave it to us anyways. Here's another gold robe. But, if you're someone who's really looking around, you'll probably find this. Otherwise, you probably would have missed it. I don't know, Gage. That looks pretty steep. This is actually a way that we are actually able to get down the wall. Well, you can try it if you want. Just let me off here. Why, Arthur? Look, I don't want to sound like your mother, but... You gotta put your eye out. What would I put my eye out on? Whoa! Oh! A poorly placed weapon rack interceded Agent 5's effort to infiltrate the middle bailey of Sarto Gaillard. The resulting puncture wounds were fatal, and execution had been notified. Now, a lot of, a couple of the death screens in this specific time period kind of make me question the structural integrity of the jumpsuit. Yes, you would have to have a specific metal in order to jump through time, but, and have the metal be light enough to, um, be mobile inside of it, but 
doesn't have a lot of density to it, does it? Then again, I don't think they're considering that there's multiple ways you can do stupid things like this. All right, see you back at the roof. <laughs> it's very easy to die here. What is that, three now? Explosive shower of debris from a nearby boulder impact knocked Agent 5 off a 15 meter parapet, causing terminal impact with the ground below. So it can't... Sh so the jumpsuit can't stand against punctures and also severe hits. It's almost like you're not supposed to be able to defend yourself. That's... well, that's exactly why. Then as you couldn't have been notified, be right back when we're not dealing with a catapult. Now luckily we don't actually have to deal with the guys over here. Simply because of this. Missed me by that much. Mm-hmm. Now that actually happened a lot quicker than I thought it was gonna happen. Maybe it's because I'm just taking too long. Anyways. So here's the thing, and honest obviously we can't see the catapult, of course. And would it be catapult or trebuchet? It doesn't look like we're getting past this hole in the wall. But maybe this can help us get down to ground level. Because, you know, we're not able to jump or anything. Jumping is not a thing unless it's contextual. But... Well, if the rubble didn't collapse that roof, it's a pretty good bet it'll hold us, too. Are we pretty sure? Honestly, I do not have any conceivable knowledge about how much the gym suit weighs. Let's try it. Alright, and we're down. I suppose we could try to find a way into the keep. Maybe check out some of these buildings down here. Otherwise, what he's saying is simply explore. Which is exactly what we kind of need to do. Unfortunately, we can't get back up to the parapet. If we wanted to do that, we would have to recall and jump back to the beginning of the time period. So let's look around the middle, Bailey. Buildings in this time were built of a half-timber framework with gaps filled with wattle and dog. God, I hate English. Anyway, basically a mat of woven reeds covered with mud and clay. Hmm. Okay, so there's a couple of things we can see in here. The middle Bailey actually isn't very long. But there is a lot happening. Honestly, we get a lot of human contact. Not so much that it actually kills us, but we get to see a lot of stuff. Including that guy I keep wandering around, what I consider the Black Knight. And then we get to see a kind of a battle. Very choreographed, though. Then again, they believe they're honorable and actually know what they're doing compared to what I would ever be able to do, flailing around like a complete idiot. Yeah. So yeah, the battle over here, if you, keep lo if you keep looking at it, it just loops between the two, so we will never see the outcome, unfortunately. Anyway, there's a place over here that we're actually able to look at and go into. This is very easy to miss on your first time through. And if you're playing on um, walkthrough mode, you actually don't have to go in here at all. It also gets very specific music, which is surprising for a room like this. It looks like we're in a pretty well-equipped blacksmith shop. There's bound to be something useful in here. Let's just look around a little. Okie dokie. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Yes. 
the incredible sharpening wheel, the latest in lightweight stone technology. It spins, it sparks, it sharpens your knives. It's absolutely free with your six-piece set of Ginsu broadswords. So where can I get a set of those today? Wow, I hate myself now. Okay. Anyway, over here is a very important item. Hello? Excuse me? Hello? Hammer? Useful? Hammer? Useful? I don't know what hammer is. Wit, wit, hammer, wit, 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 yeah, take the hammer. This hammer doesn't actually get any use in this time period, but it's actually necessary in order to complete another time period. Meant from years of use, it's worn, so that probably means something. Hello? Three meters, that's the closest we've been to a guy without getting stabbed or smacked or... You know... Ugh. Yeah, there's the sharpening wheel. Very handy. Unfortunately, we don't get, actually get to see that black knight. He just kind of wanders around. Very imminent, but with no impact. Hey, now there's a nasty looking brick. The blacksmith would use something like that to hold cows and horses still for shoeing. No doubt some of them enjoyed it too, I mean. Still, there's nothing more disturbing than a cow into bondage. Ooh. This place certainly has been hit. Unfortunately, seeing the hole there. This is an old wood burning fork, which blacksmiths at the time used to heat up and soften raw iron, which they would then hammer to create rod or forged tools and weapons. This fire can only get up to about 1300 degrees Celsius. Stop me, I'm getting too technical. So they would be limited to casting softer metals, such as bronze, copper, or Fortunately, I can't stop Arthur to say, hey, speak up! Popping the bellows toss air through the cold, stoking the fire. Try it, you weakling. Then I met this well. So, welcome to a very interesting kind of puzzle, I guess you could say. There are many interesting things that can happen, many different things that can happen here, especially when you're playing either on adventure or walkthrough mode. Such as this. Hmm, interesting. Well, this obviously makes a key for something important enough that the mold has been hidden. We might want to find out what it's for. Yeah, surprising why they would be it would be under a brick. It's not like it would be pressing it against anything, like it's a mold. Well, it's obviously a mold for a key. But why would he have hidden it under a brick? It's amazing how the happen comments sometimes are very similar to each other. Anyways, what we gotta do is fiddle around with the forge a bit. But, what we actually have to do is use our copper medallion that we actually got from uh, Chichen Itza. This is the reason why I went to Chichen Itza first, is because we can't actually go further into this time period on adventure mode without it. So what I'm able to do is actually just put the copper medallion inside of this pan and then heat it up. And there we have it. Very simple, it cooled instantly. But now we have ourselves a copper key. Hmm, I wonder what we're gonna be using it for, seeing as it's a key that would only be used for this time period. Now, if you were playing on walkthrough mode and you happened to stumble into the forge, you'd find the key already made in, in here. Anyway, that's all we need to do into the forge, so let's get the Get out of here. And back into the middle bailey. Unfortunately, the Black Knight doesn't repeat himself going around here. Even though he just kind of wanders around. I've never actually seen him show up anywhere.
Hmm. Hey, there we go. Looks like there's a light on and the window's jiggling? I see a slight movement. Anyway. Hello, what do we have here? Well, there's no bridge and there's no boat, so maybe you should try the direct approach. Unfortunately, Arthur has nothing to say about the evidence that's apparently right around where we are. But he is discussing about getting across here. You know, sometimes you've just got to get your feet wet. Look, check your files. Your suit is waterproof. If I had lips, I'd want you to read them. Mm -hmm. I believe the files biochip does mention something about the, it, our jumpsuit being waterproof. Seeing as we how we can, I don't know, go into space with it. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. No, I won't. Hmm, an open window. That might be a way into the keep. Yeah, we just have to get across. Hey, dudes, what's up? Hey. Hello. Surprised they're not even looking at me. It's very rude. Anyway, it looks like the Black Knight went across here to the tents. We can't go that way, unfortunately, but so we can't actually follow him. Anyway, evidence! Evidence! Somewhere. It, it, it's actually very easy in order to figure out. So this is the first piece of evidence that is actually not critical. It's supporting evidence. Five, three. Looks like a footprint. That's pretty much is. Somebody's been here. It's a serial number like this on the bottom of their foot. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, Arthur doesn't actually have anything to say about this. That's either a very dirty moat or a very clean sewer. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't mean anything, because we have to go down here. I like that the, the game goes between Chateau Gaillard and then someone holding a camera underwater in a river. It It's very simple, yet kind of ridiculous at the same time. One guy, two guy, three guy. So now we have to deal with this wall. Holy vertically challenged, Batman! We gotta get up there! Why don't you check your utility belt? Well, you're either gonna need a grappling hook or get bitten by a radioactive spider. Look, I've used up all the literary references I think you'll understand. Use the grappling hook. Yeah, sure, you've definitely used up all of your references. But I'm feeling some reference overload right now, so we're actually going to stop here before we get on to climbing up here and infiltrating Chateau Gaillard. So see you next time, everyone, as we use our wonderful, handy-dandy, trusty, we've never used it before, grappling hook. See you next time, everyone.